10 things you should know about cavemen. Thanks guys for the wonderful comments on our creepiest necropolis video. We're making sure the History Channel stays one step behind us. And if you liked that video, we know you're gonna love learning about cavemen as well. Number 10. Ancient Escargot Who were the first to find snails on the ground and think, hey, there's my lunch? Many would argue that the escargot is specifically a French delicacy. Hundreds of burnt snail shells were found in the caves alongside a cliff in Spain. These were found just outside the city of Benidorm and what they believe were ancient fireplaces. The snails could be served as a part of a protein-rich diet that fueled our ancient ancestors. Escargot is known for being extremely healthy, also rich in polyunsaturated fats, zinc, iron, calcium, and other vitamins. Eating escargot might make cavemen just a tad more sophisticated than we once thought. Number 9. Arachnophobes Fear of spiders is certainly not a new thing by any means. It's been ingrained into our genes dating back thousands of years ago. Humans who didn't trust these tiny yet hideous arachnids were often the ones who survived and passed down their genes. This makes it an evolutionary response. Super spiders with a strong venom in places such as Africa were believed to have possibly existed millions of years ago. The ones who stayed as far away as possible and the ones who wouldn't try them as a source of food lasted longer in this unpredicted environment. A severe disgust of all arachnids could possibly have been one of the biggest selective advantages, especially while man was living in caves. These caves are probably infested with them. So next time you freak out because you see a spider, you can thank your caveman ancestors. Oh look, there's one on your keyboard right now! Number 8. Blue-Eyed Cavemen This is an artist portrayal of how the first blue-eyed man might have looked like. The bright blue eyes doesn't seem to match the other dark characteristics of his hair at that time. Found in the caves of northwest Spain, this man showed DNA traits similar to Scandinavian DNA. He showcased a mixture of African and European traits, meaning the color of eyes changed before the alterations in skin tone. His skeleton was unusually well preserved when it was unearthed near the city of Lyon, Spain. These remains are believed to be 7,000 years old, and there are some hints in his genes that showed how humans began to change when agriculture began to show prominence at this time. He would have been lactose intolerant and newly resistant to bacteria from domesticated animals. Number 7. Paleolithic Europeans Where did the first Europeans come from, and how has the continent become so densely populated compared to North and South America? Scientists are beginning to believe that the founding fathers of Europe came from a group of people living in Belgium 35,000 years ago, so anyone with European DNA would be theoretically linked to this one tribe. It's believed that this group began to become displaced when another group of early humans came here 32,000 years ago. This moment in time forced them to expand and set up new settlements across Europe. This group of people known as Aurignacians were the ones who repopulated Europe once the ice sheets on the Ice Age had finally melted. Remains of this culture are found throughout southern France and the Chauvet Caves and all the way to the Crimean Peninsula. Although many people might disagree with this, it seems to be theory supported by many historians and scientists. Number 6. Cavemen Diets while many people are firm believers in what's known as the caveman diet, if they did further research, they would need to change what's on the menu. The caveman diet was theorized by Lorraine Cordain, and it focuses on eating only things a caveman would have had been able to eat. Scientists claim that this diet is ridiculous because people at that time simply ate whatever they could to survive. They claim that our diet was much like that of a bear's, meaning omnivorous, and even like scavengers at times. Humans living in the north would have primarily ate meat, while the ones closer to the equator would have most likely eaten fruits and plants. Judging by how our teeth were, research claims humans probably ate a much wider variety of things than we once thought, which means if you're rolling with the caveman diet, you most likely need to put some cockroaches from time to time on the plate. They also ate the bare minimum of calories to survive. Even modern day strawberries bear little resemblance to the berries cavemen eat. Number 5. Neanderthal Characteristics You could be much more related to Neanderthals than you might want to believe. Studies have shown that about 20% of Neanderthal genomes survive in modern Homo sapiens, so about 20% of yourself is a little bit primal. Humans who live in deserts generally don't need Neanderthal characteristics quite as much as the ones who live nearby forests or other green climates. Many characteristics of Neanderthals seem to gradually disparate after thousands of years of natural selection. Other qualities of Neanderthals would work just fine in modern times. For example, the skin of this species seemed to have little to no evolutionary change for people who lived in colder regions of Asia and Europe. Ever wonder why you might get rosy cheeks? 
This is an inherited gene from our distant cousins. Also, the straighter the hair you have, the more similar genetics you possess to Neanderthals. Number 4. Neanderthal Intelligence Maybe cavemen weren't quite as stupid as they look. They are normally depicted in movies as thuggish, club-swinging thugs with little to no culture. People are beginning to realize that this isn't by any means the case. Many researchers even claim there is no cognitive superiority between humans and Neanderthals. Yes, we've made advancements throughout the ages, but that doesn't mean we're biologically more intelligent. This would be like saying that people in the 90s were less intelligent than us now because they didn't have iPhones. Discoveries like this one in Brunikel, France, prove that Neanderthals were skilled toolmakers. Other studies show that the demise of this species was not from being inferior to Homo sapiens, but from the infertility issues. Number 3. Cavemen Choirs Evidence from cave paintings suggests that cavemen enjoyed acoustic qualities of their caves, especially for singing. One like this here suggests that they have the ability to even play the flute. At this time, Neanderthals enjoyed singing with high-pitched voices and mimicking noises they would hear from animals. Imagine an entire clan of hairy cavemen grunting and groaning their own musical works. Cavemen were trained to use their voice in order to navigate their way through caves with echolocation, similar to a bat. Music's been around since prehistoric times, ever since they realized they could create certain noises with bones, shells, stones, and of course, their voices. With the echoes from a cave, it must have been interesting to hear their style of music. Number 2. Hunting Being a hunter-gatherer back in the Stone Age certainly was no easy task. Luckily, with the discovery of fire though, if cavemen were lucky enough to find food sources, they could have some quality barbecues. Imagine trying to take down a massive woolly mammoth with only sticks and stones. The early Stone Age people used sharpened sticks and eventually used an arrow or spear with a sharpened flint or bone. Each part of the animal that was hunted was used with some important purpose. With a lack of hunting technology, stalking a prey could have been incredibly exhausting, and just to make a bow would have taken weeks of hard work. Even when it was finished, there was no guarantee how effective a stone-tipped arrow would be against a raging animal. During the end of the Paleolithic era, a spear-throwing invention called the Atol Atol, developed by Homo sapiens, would prove to be the most effective. And number one, amazing painters. The cave paintings in Lascaux, France depict Paleolithic paintings of some type of animals that were hunted. This includes horses, birds, bulls, and even rhinoceroses. This complex cave in southwestern France is estimated to date back 17,300 years ago and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The cave contains nearly 2,000 images of mainly human hands, abstract figures, and animals. Many of the colors of paints that they used were from mineral pigments mostly containing iron oxide. This explains the orange rusty color you see here. Another interesting cave painting is found in Argentina known as La Cueva de los Manos, which translates to Cave of the Hands. You have to admit it though, this is much cooler than some examples of modern art we have today.